So today we are going to look at a question from the paper two, um, 7127 from June 2019. It's question 12. It's a little one they snuck into section A. It's only worth eight marks, but there was an inordinate amount of work to do. Uh, it concerns capital investment appraisal, so calculating the net present value and the payback period. But it really isn't as straightforward as it looks. So before you can even get started with this, you've got to work out the cash flow. And in order to work out the cash flow, you've got to sort out some depreciation. So let's look at what we're given. We're told that FAB is considering upgrading the production facility by investing in a new high-tech machine. And they've given some information about the cost of the machine. So the 194675 is going to be your initial outlay. So that's going to be your year zero outflow. Um, the estimated residual value is 34675. That's what they anticipate they'll be able to sell it for at the end. So that's going to be the um, scrap value, which is going to be inflows at the end of year four. Okay. And then the estimated life is four years. So the reason they're telling us that is so that we can work out the depreciation. So remember that the depreciation is the cost minus the estimated residual value divided by the estimated life. So the cost minus the estimated residual value is going to be 160,000. If we divide that by four years, that means that depreciation, because it's done on the straight line method, is going to be 40,000 pounds per annum. Now, why are we interested in this, you may ask, because it's a cash flow. Well, the reason is that they're telling us that the profit before the year ended, um, for the, for the year to year one at the end, is going to be £35,000. But profit, remember, is not the same as cash flow. So the cash flow we can assume is going to be £35,000 profit plus the £40,000 um, depreciation. So year one cash flow is going to be £75,000. So it's £40,000 worth of depreciation added to the £35,000 of profit. Um, the profit is then estimated to increase by 10% per annum year on year. So year two's cash flow is going to be 35,000 plus 10%, which is going to be 38,500, won't it? Plus again, 40,000 of depreciation. So that's going to be a total of 78,500 pounds. I'm now going to cheat and just show you the, um, the accumulated or the, the cash flows worked out for each of the years. So you can see there um, that in year one, we've got the profit of 35,000 pounds. This has just come from the examiner's mark scheme. Plus the depreciation of 40,000 gives you cash flows of 75,000. And if you look there, you can see we've got the, uh, the 38,500 we've just worked out for year two, plus the depreciation gives us cash flows of 78,500. So what we're doing each year is adding 10% to the profit to get the next year's profit figure. So once we've got all of those cash flows sorted out, we can then start to look at Perhaps if we turn the pen on, we can then start to look at um, the payback period. So if you remember, the initial outlay was this 194675. So if we go back to the original question, we've got um, the initial outlay is the 194675. So we're trying to work out how many years it's taking to pay that back um, from the cash outflows. So 194,675 minus 75,000. So year zero, 194,675. We're going to take away that 75,000. So 194,675 minus 75,000 means that we've still got 119,675 to pay back when we get to the end of year, year one. Um, year two's cash flows, we take those off 78,500 means that we're left with 41,175, which needs to be paid back out of year three's cash flows of 82,350. Remember to times that by 12 to convert it into months. So 41,175 divided by 
350 is 0 0.5 times that by 12, it's six months. Don't quote your um, time periods as you know, decimal, so don't put um, ideally 2.5 years, although it is two and a half years, two years, six months. It won't always be a nice round amount like that. So therefore we can say that payback occurs after two years and six months. Okay, the next thing we need to do then is work out the discounted cash flow. We're given the discounted um, cash flow, the factors that we need to use. So we can just multiply each of these um, cash flows. So the 75,000, the 78,500, the 82,350, and the 86,585. The other thing we need to remember though is that at the end of year four, we're going to be getting that estimated residual value 34,675. Back in, that's also going to need to be discounted by the appropriate factor. So, in the case of year four, is 0.636. So, if we go back to the, the question, I'll show you what I mean. Um, so, we've got these factors here. So, each of those we're using a 12% cost of capital. So, if we discount all of the cash flows for each of these years, add everything up, so including the estimated residual value, and not forgetting to deduct the year zero outflow of 194. Six seven five. Um, we should end up. Spoiler alert. We. So you can see there that the um, discounted factor or discount factors have been applied to each of those amounts of cash flow to come up with the present value. And the overall, when we add everything up, so we started with the initial outlay there, the one nine four six seven five. We've discounted all the the cash flows. So remember that the cash flow multiplied by the discount factor equals the present value. And when we add all of that together, including the estimated residual value that we're getting at the end of year four, we end up with a positive 70,619, which means that they have achieved their ARR that they wanted of 12%. So if the present value is exactly zero, that means they've achieved exactly 12%. The fact that it's higher than that, it's a positive figure, um, means that they've achieved more than 12%. So on that basis, the fact that it pays back um, in two years, six months, and there's a nice positive net present value, they should probably go ahead and uh, proceed with that project. Thanks for watching.